In this video, we're going to take a look at periodic trends in ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, and metallic character. So let's start out with a definition for ionization energy. So this is defined as the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a neutral gaseous atom. If we were to write this as an equation, we would say X, which is our neutral gaseous atom, reacts to give an X plus because we've removed an electron plus an electron. So if we take, for example, our atom here that has two electrons, then we remove one electron and then we have an electron left over. So this has now effectively created an ion. So this is just defined as our first ionization energy. We can do subsequent ones. So we can do a second ionization energy, which would take our positively charged ion and remove one more electron to make it a two plus. We could have a third ionization energy, which would take our two plus ion, remove one more electron to make it a three plus and so on. But we're just gonna focus on the first ionization energy in this video. So in terms of the trends for ionization energy, as we go across a period, it increases. And as we go down a group, it decreases or up a group, it increases. So let's look at both of these trends and explain why this occurs. First, let's look down a group. So ionization energy decreases down a group and that's because, as you recall in our last video, atomic radii increases down a group. And so when atomic radii increases, it makes it easier to remove an electron from the atom. And that's because the shielding effect of the core electrons increases faster than the nuclear charge, so it weakens the attractive force between the nucleus and the outer electrons in the atom, thus making it much easier to be able to pull an electron off of that. If we take a look across a period, remember our atomic radii decreases across a period. And that's because our effective nuclear charge increases across the period. And so when atomic radii decreases, it makes it more difficult to remove an electron. And that's, like I said, because the effective nuclear charge increases. So the attraction between the electrons and the nucleus also increases, thus making it way more difficult to remove an electron. Okay, so we need another definition. We need electron affinity. So this is essentially the opposite of ionization energy in that electron affinity is defined as the energy released when an electron is added to a neutral gaseous element. If we were to represent this with an equation, we would say X, which is our neutral gaseous element, plus an electron is going to make an X minus. So we've added an electron to it. If we were to represent this, say we had six valence electrons, we're adding one, it would have then seven valence electrons with a negative charge. Now, when you look at electron affinity values on the periodic table, they are all negative values, and the negative sign just means that energy is being released. So if we take a look at the trends in the periodic table, as we go across a period, electron affinity increases, and as we go down a group, it decreases, or as we go up a group, as in this picture, it increases. Now, in terms of electron affinity, as I said, the values are negative. So when you look at any of the values on the, on the periodic table, you will see negative values. The more negative the value is, the greater the attraction is. Now the trends for electron affinity are not as well defined as ionization energy, atomic radius, or electronegativity, which we're going to look at next. Um, and as we kind of look at our new atomic model in future chemistry courses, we'll explain this trend in particular further. So we're just gonna leave this one here for now. 
electronegativity, we are going to get into this in uh, future videos, but just to define it very briefly, it's defined as the relative attraction that an atom has for a shared pair of electrons in a covalent bond. So I always love this picture here. We've got an HCl molecule, and uh, so the H is represented by our penguin here, our Cl is represented by the polar bear, and this the chlorine has a greater pull on the shared pair of electrons between them, which is represented by the two scoops on the ice cream cone. But as I said, we'll get into electronegativity in much more detail in a future video. Taking a look at the general trends, though, in terms of the trend for electronegativity, it increases as we go across a period, and it also increases as we go up a group or decreases as we go down a group. Now, in terms of the reasoning, it's similar reasons as those for ionization energies, so you can use the same sort of justification. Across a period, electronegativity increases because the effective nuclear charge increases and the atomic radii decreases across a period. And down a group, electronegativity decreases because atomic radii is increasing. And although the nuclear charge, or Z, increases, its effect is shielded by the core electron. So again, just using that similar reasoning here for electronegativity to explain the trends. Finally, we've got trends in metallic and non-metallic characters. So if you recall from a previous video, elements can be classified as either metals, non-metals, or metalloids. And so in terms of the trend itself, metallic character is going to decrease across the period, and it's going to increase down a group. Couple things to keep in mind metals have low ionization energy values. They tend to lose electrons during a chemical reaction. So, this trend fits in terms of those ionization energies. And non metals have highly negative uh, electron affinity values. They tend to gain electrons during a chemical reaction. And so, again, this trend fits with those non metals. So those are our trends for ionization energy, electron affinity, electronegativity, and metallic character. Now let's move on to our next task.